Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen of YouTube and Chucky2009, and I'm here. And this is Peter Zila with Zila Industrial Repairs. And, uh, and we are going to be running some, what is this called, outer shield wire, 45 thousandths of an inch. And, uh, but first off, we're just going to cut out a couple of these coupons here and some backing strips. We'll have some to weld on and, uh, and we'll go from there. So now we got all our coupons prepared, and I guess we might as well talk a little bit about the wire. Pete, what do you know about this here stuff? Wire. Dual shield, outer shield. ESAP calls it dual shield, Lincoln calls it outer shield. It's a flux cord wire. It's basically a tubular wire. There's like an outer tube. The inside is filled with flux powder. And um, what this wire does, what the specialty of this wire is, is it's meant for heavy duty fabrication. Uh, railroad cars building, shipbuilding, bridges, where strength is important and but also where you have to have a little bit malleability and give in it. You don't want things to break, you don't want it to be hard and brittle, you want it to give a little bit. This wire makes deposits, they're a lot like a 7018 stick rod and uh, the specialty is it's welded in a spray arc transfer it's a hot penetration, good puddle wetting, and then when you're done welding with it, it creates a slag layer on top of the bead, which helps the bead to cool down slow and evenly to um, prevent weld hardening or stress cracking. So, 045 diameter, we'll uh, load this in the machine and see what it does. All right, sounds good. So we'll just dig this out, and today we're going to be running it with an HTP MIG 2400. And uh, Pete, do you have any weld parameters settings in mind in terms of like wire feed or voltage or anything? That's good starting values for this here stuff. When I took the state certification test with this wire, the weld parameters that they gave us were 250 inches a minute and 25 volts, which is a medium hot setting. Uh, still suitable for all position welding, vertical up, overhead, but also in position. When you load this wire, make sure that we have a liner that accommodates 045 wire, drive roll grooves that accommodate 045 wire, so that we have everything ready to go. Alright, sounds good. The shielding gas flow on this wire should be at about 40 cubic feet per hour, 40, 45, and um, We'll you, we will be using a 7525 shielding gas with it. This wire gets welded in the regular MIG wire polarity. So the gun will be in the positive and the ground lead will be in the negative. Pretty much exactly how you run regular, you know, solid MIG wire short circuit. Same gas, same polarity. Just have to get it lined up just right. Now I'll set the tension on these drive rollers, fire the machine, we'll pull it through and install the tip. 15 foot gun, it takes a while. All right. That's our tip, now we just need a nozzle and we'll be in business. What kind of stick out do you usually run with this wire? Um, we can refer to the Lincoln book here. All right. If, if, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, three quarters to an F an inch, possibly as much as one inch. Okay. Wow, that's a lot. I'll just go ahead and get this handy dandy heat shield ready because I understand this is going to be pretty warm. Outer Shield 71M. Spray transfer. And um, we will be welding in 045 diameter. And the stick out is 3 quarters of an inch. Wow. All right. Sure. Okay. And at about 250 inches a minute. Lincoln suggests that you are between like 25 and 28 volts, which will result, result to about 160 amps. 
your melt off rate will be 5.8 pounds per hour. That's a lot. And of water. you will deposit five pounds steel per hour. Not bad. Not bad. Try to do that with stick welding. <laughs> now the last thing we have to do is get our welding parameters dialed into this nice MIG welder. And uh, basically we're going to be running, these are approximate measurements that we took earlier. If you're curious to find out, uh, you know, exactly how you can determine wire feed speed from a welder that ranges, you know, that has a readout of like 0 to 10, you know, 100% or, uh, or something like that. Anything but standard inches a minute or metric equivalent. We actually made a video on how to measure this and I'll post a link in the description if you're curious to know. But from our readout we figured that the wire feed setting of 3 will give us about 280 inches a minute and since we're aiming for 250 we want to be just shy of the three here. I'm gonna guess about there. I don't know. And uh, we want 25 volts, right? All right. 25, you want 25 volts. volts. You have a stopwatch? Nah, yeah, I'll bust it out All right. real quick. Let's the voltage. Let's the voltage we have to check while the arc is actually str uh, struck. All right. That's so correct. first, let's do the wire speed. Basically, what he's gonna do is uh. Pull that trigger and hold it in for six seconds, and then we'll take that because that's a tenth of a minute and multiply it by ten. Cool. All right, well. That was just a hair too long, but let's see how much we have. All right. 21 and a. 20, 22 and a half. 20. So. Give it a little bit more. This is 225, 225. Yeah. inches a minute. Give it a little bit more there. Okay. Slightly more. One more run. One more run. Okay. Cool. Now we have 23 and a half. Yeah. Oh, we got more. We got like 20, 24, 24 and a quarter. Good enough for All right, me. that's going to be close enough. Great. Well, now let's do the voltage. As you can see, our approximate settings here indicate that we'll have to have the main voltage on 4 of 4 and the sub voltage on 4 of 6. So basically what I'll do is I'll just uh, head over to the welder here. We have 4. Actually, it happens to already be set like that, so, uh, so we'll be fine. All right. Well, I guess... Now it's time to fix some tack welds or uh, just weld for a second let's or two. A, yeah, let's get a test piece and so let's see what the actual voltage readout is. On the machine. Alright, excellent. Now there are ways you can get a good voltage reading if you don't have a digital readout like this HDP does. And uh, that's also covered in that other video that I mentioned. Really? That's up for 25 or 26. Check it up one more. The book says 25 to 28. Okay. All right. We just gave him one more notch of voltage. There's 28, 27. It's ranging 27 to 28 on the lower end of 27. We'll also have to crank up the fume extractor. That's good enough. Yeah, That's we good. will have to crank up the fume extractor. All right. We'll just come over here, fire up this nice Avani SPC 2000. eighths of an inch thick, it's hot rolled, 1018 flat stock, 5 inches wide. In a test situation for a state certification, this material would be as much as 1 inch thick and it also would be 6 inches wide. Okay. After filling this all in with weld, there's two strips cut out of it and they're bent tested and there's a certain allowance for imperfections but it's not much, it cannot break. If there is imperfections in there, there can not be any cracks originating from any pinholes or slag inclusions. So the key is, this is a 1G weld, this would be a 2G weld, this would be a 3G weld, and this would be a 4G weld. 
It has to be welded and clean in position. It cannot be moved. Once it's like tacked to the table or like vertical up, this is where it has to stay. All right. So what we will do today is we'll start with we start with the one G and fill this in here. There's a quarter inch open root in there. So we will fill this with weld, multiple passes, weave passes, and we'll be using a neutral angle or a slight push angle. Okay. He's gonna be going in there pretty much perpendicular, maybe with a slight push. Hang on. All right, I'm gonna reposition this one first. And one other thing before we begin, let's have a look at all the uh, safety gear that he's wearing. He's got the helmet with probably a darker shade than he uses for other things, I guess. Uh, we got the safety glasses, we got uh, the heavy coat, and these gloves with the heat resistant backing. Yeah, flux core is hot. It's spray arc, it will be hot. With a short neck gun like this, it will be really hot on your hands. I can only recommend wear long sleeves when you weld flux core. All right, here, let me get it. Position here. Chip the weld and see if we did any good. All right. Look at that, it just comes off. with weave passes but the weave passes cannot be too wide or we can run stringers down and stack the stringer on top of stringer so let's go to town all right you want to try not to weld over the slag but you can stack passes next to each other or have like a third overlap and still be okay. Okay. See how see how easy the slag peels off? Once you have heat in the part, the slag comes off really easy. That is awesome. It's basically like the love child of stick and MIG welding. Stick welding from a spool, looks like. All right, let's put another few passes in.
happened when we had the wire not feeding correctly, when you saw it burning back more. One out of two things, either my contact tip to work distance was too short, everything heated up and the wire was binding in the tip, or the drive rollers were slipping. We're using V-Groove drive rollers here. We should use some narrow drive rollers with a little bit of tread that feed the wire nicer. This tubular wire, besides that it's really slick, it's also really brittle. You can break this wow. off without uh, side cutters to restart. Very nice. Now let's see what this looks like. Definitely a ginormous flux core weld. Yeah. This is about the widest you can go from now on. You have to put half passes in. Half pass up here, half pass up there. You legally, you're only allowed to go so wide. Okay. Sure, cool. Alright YouTube, I've never done this before, but I'm willing to try it and post the results on the internet anyway. Once I figure out how this here heat shield thing works. Alright, I think we're good. So we got our handy dandy Harbor Freight bender, and we are bending this fine specimen.